Welcome back, everyone, to another Emacs video here. Um, so I was just um, sitting around here in uh, in Emacs and thinking, well, you know, if you're a beginner, how easy or obvious is it to customize Emacs? Uh, because if you go online, you'll see a lot of fancy Emacs configurations out there. And um, I, I think it could be a little overwhelming, especially, you know, for, for non-programmers who are interested in Emacs and, and kind of getting started or jumping in, seeing if it's something that they'll want to use. So I'm going to go through the approach that I took and uh, kind of outline a good process, I think, uh, at least that, that I would recommend. Uh, for somebody who's getting started in Emacs and wants uh, just some basic tips on on customizing it to fit their needs. Because uh, one of the uh, key features of Emacs that um, is often uh, talked about quite a bit is how much you can customize it. And um, there's you can see a lot of that on my channel and, of course, uh, other channels. Uh, so in order to get more work done and be more productive, you will, to some extent, want to customize Emacs to your unique workflows. So what I've outlined here basically is a sort of a, a system of learning the basics first. I know you'll, you'll see people right away talk about using things like evil mode, which uh, integrates the, the key bindings from Vim, uh, because um, a lot of people feel that those are, are more, uh, more intuitive to your, your natural hand placement on the keyboard and, and things like that. Um, but I've, I've, uh, I still have not got around to trying evil mode. Uh, because when I got into Emacs, I saw, wow, this is something great that I can totally customize to the, the work that I'm doing. And um, I felt that the best way to do that would be to learn the out-of-the-box basics, as hard as that might sound, uh, because, you know, you want to get around and, and do some fun and dangerous things. Uh, but I feel like the, the approach that at least has worked for me is to start with the basics and I don't try to customize too much. Take a more minimalist approach. Um, to only customize things when you feel like you really, really want to. And um, and otherwise, you know, just kind of enjoy uh, being a, a neophyte and, um, pardon, phone went off, and uh, and see what's available to you. So, like, that would be how to move around with the the default keys, which may not be the best, but, you know, they, they basically can, can take you quite far. Um, and then available functions. So what uh, what kind of stuff do you have available to you? Moving to, of course, uh, the, the, the end of your document, uh, across sentences, moving around, um, learning how to use the, uh, the systems for, for killing lines, killing sentences, and uh, yanking things to, to other buffers, moving around between buffers. Um, well, you'll, you'll see that uh, if you run through the Emacs tutorial, which I'll mention, you, you have uh, a few default key bindings. One thing that's incredibly helpful is finding out what function on the back end is running when you use a, a certain key binding. Uh, so there is a um, there's a key binding for that. So Control H, letter H for help, and then K. Uh, so it will you know describe whatever key you're pressing. So you know Control F. Control F is bound to the function uh, forward. A char or you know forward character so you, you can see the functions listed right there so that can be very helpful because I, ideally down the road you might be like writing your own uh, custom Emacs lisp or, um, or or customizing some existing functions so knowing what functions are already written on the back end that you can build upon is just a, a great way of, uh, of understanding how the whole ecosystem is, uh, is working. Uh, and getting comfortable in the help system. This is another huge one. So if you want to go right to the Emacs documentation anytime from within Emacs, yeah, you could Google something, but um, you know, trying to trying to stay in the interface as much as possible um, is you know not a bad thing. I think it can help you focus. So Control H R will jump you right to the to the Emacs documentation, um, and this is it's basically a shortcut into the the info system where um, you can see. Um, all sorts of uh, amazing documentation is is just waiting for you. Uh, if you're familiar with, I guess, uh, Unix-like operating systems, uh, I believe they, they all have the, the info system built in on the back end. So even when you install new software, if it has uh, info-based documentation that comes with it, 
it'll be installed in the in the top directory of, of the info system automatically. So it's a really good resource. Uh, I highly recommend it. I did a whole video about it. So maybe I will I will link to that. Um, okay, and if, if you want to know what else is in the help system, you can do control H and a question mark. And you can see there's, there's other things here that um, that you can look at. Uh, one other thing that's helpful is, of course, if, if you want to know what a certain function does, you can control H and the letter F, and you can, you know, we can look up functions like uh, when I was looking at uh, recently was the thing at point. It uh, can tell you information about where your what's what element you're you're actually sitting on when you're uh, in a text document or, or something like that. But basically, yeah. So you can you can look up functions, you can look up variables. A lot of the things that you'll be customizing initially are variables. Like if you are um, if you're changing your, your window styles. I talk about that right here. Um, a great resource would be copying from other people. You, you'll see that as you're, as you're learning Emacs, you'll find other Emacs users who might, uh, like myself, talk about, uh, about tips and tricks and things on YouTube. They'll often have links to their configuration files so you can see what, what they've got. Um, and you can start just you know setting some basic variables. Um, I'll show you my, uh, my window styling section here. In uh, here in my document, uh, so where is it? So here I've got a I've got a window styling section. So something like right here, menu bar mode negative one means uh, you know no menu bar. Toolbar negative one, uh, no toolbar, uh, no scroll bar. These are uh, these are some basic uh, configurations. Uh, backup files. So when you you know when you open up a file, it, it kind of makes like a so they sometimes call it a ghost file. It's like a, like a backup file. Uh, you can you can turn that off, which is uh, something that can be uh, very helpful to you depending on on what you're doing. So stuff like that, you know. And I've got um, I've also got a customization up here that if I if I use the extension dot draft at the end of a of a document, it'll open up org mode. Uh, the reason I have that is for my for my website, but uh, that, that's a different story. But uh, something interesting to know. So yeah, just, so just starting by kind of configuring your windows and how you want things to open is, a, is another great start. And um, oh, before I forget, the um, I believe they they might mention that in the Emacs tutorial. I'm not sure, but to get to the Emacs tutorial, uh, Control H and the letter T. Just wanted to mention that before I forgot. Uh, yes, and of course, themes. You know, I also have another video about uh, changing your default theme. That's another easy way to to get started customizing Emacs right away. In getting to know your your Emacs config file, so uh, most basically, um, having a file called .emacs in your in your home directory is uh, is a great start. But there are other there are other places where uh, the system can read your um, what they call it's called your initialization file or your init file so you can see what it says here when emacs is started it normally tries to load a lisp program from an initialization file or init file for short this file if it exists specifies how to initialize emacs for you traditionally file.emacs in your home directory is used as the init file although emacs also looks at .emacs uh, .el also in the home directory or uh, in your home directory, there's your emacs.d, your, your emacs directory. You can put a file called init.el. Uh, there's, there's different places where you can put this configuration file, but that is where you'll start to do some of your initial customizations. So you'll you'll want to pick where you want to put that file. Uh, I recommend just putting it, you know, the .emacs file in the in the home directory. You'll see in, in my config file, it's written in org mode, but it just it takes all these. Uh, Lisp code snippets and puts them in the the .emacs file in the home directory. So uh, so that is fun, and um, of course the uh, another easy way to uh, to customize things is to use the uh, the customization system. You can just uh, actually if you type in customize, you see there's there's all sorts of uh, different things you can you can customize here variables and. Uh, you can create theme. That's interesting. Uh, but basically, yeah, the customized system is like uh, a it's like a program that basically helps you edit certain uh, variables and in, in, in different aspects of of the Emacs system. Here, and you can uh, 
uh, so standard indent. Yeah, you can you can change all kinds of things right from here, and it'll it'll save them to a separate configuration file, which will be separate from your 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 .emacs file. Uh, but just another easy way to get get started and jump in the back end there. Uh, so I believe if you if you know like a certain variable you want to customize, so let's let's look at that menu bar one again. So you can do, I believe, uh, you know, customize variable. And so you can you can actually put one in. So let's see, uh, menu bar mode, right there. So so right now I, I have it off, but another easy way to to customize a specific variable, if you know what you're looking for. But that's about it. Those are those are some basic tips on uh, on customizing Emacs to uh, to fitting your needs, whether you're a beginner or you've been playing with it for a little while. Uh, so yeah, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time.